Hey guys, uh, today what I thought I would talk about is divorce in the Philippines or uh, the lack thereof. And uh, I'm kind of gearing this video towards those of you who are thinking about being uh, involved with a Filipina romantically. Although I think you'll find this video helpful just in general if you move to the Philippines or if you're thinking about moving to the Philippines. It, I think you'll get some information here that's just going to be helpful in general. But one of the questions I've, I've heard before or one of the situations I've heard about before are uh, situations where guys have gotten involved with a woman from the Philippines who is separated. And I will say that if you move there or if you get online and start chatting with uh, some young women from the Philippines, you are going to meet some very pretty sweet women who are separated from their husbands, often through no fault of their own. It is not unusual for a woman to get married and then the guy ends up cheating on her, becomes abusive, something like that. I guess that's common anywhere, but what I found in the Philippines is that generally it seems to me like Filipinas usually are tend to be very faithful to a marriage and they will not leave a man unless he really does some things that completely shatter the marriage vow. Uh, in other words, you don't necessarily run across as many couples who said, well, we just couldn't get along, we grew apart, the kind of things that you hear in America. Now, you will run across that some, but I'll just say that a lot of the young ladies I've met that are separated had some really serious issues with with what in terms of what their husbands were doing. Uh, so to give you some background here, that's that's the the first thing is you will meet some, you know, you'll meet people who are separated just like you would here in the states. But the the problem in the Philippines is there is no divorce. Philippines is the only country right now that does not have divorce. Uh, as a Christian, obviously I see divorce kind of the same way I see war. It's just the absolute last resort when you can't make things work any other way. But having said that, you know, if I was che cheating on my wife, doing drugs, abusing her, I would not expect her to stick around. But in the Philippines, because of the influence of the Catholic Church, there is no divorce there. And there's, there are arguments back and forth about that. And I think uh, Filipinos even have this, this idea that divorce is easy here in America. And I've had to explain to uh, quite a few people that no, divorce is not easy here in America. It's just that it's possible. And so what do people do in the Philippines when their marriages break up? Well, there are uh, a couple of options. One is there is what they call divorce Filipino style. I've had friends jokingly tell me uh, we are divorce Filipino style, meaning to say they're separated, they have not been together for quite some time. Both the, the man and woman may even be involved in other relationships. They may have started other families, but on paper, they're still married because there is no divorce in the Philippines. Another option, the, the more official and expensive option, is the annulment. Now, the annulment in the Philippines, it is a long, expensive process. Expensive meaning thousands of dollars, and long meaning it takes, usually, it can take years. Uh, I've known people who filed for annulment, and it just takes months and years and so it's it's not very practical for the average person. The average Filipino usually cannot afford to get an annulment. Another thing I will say is personally, I believe the annulment system in the Philippines is it's dishonest, meaning to say that most of the annulments that happen in the Philippines are what we would consider divorces here in the United States because an annulment means Technically, an annulment is supposed to mean that a legal marriage never existed for whatever reason. And most of the annulments that happen in the Philippines happen for the reason of, of what they call, if I remember correctly, psychological incapacitation. I may be wording that improperly, but it's something like that. 
they go before the judge and somehow prove that one of the parties in the marriage was psychologically unable to make the decision to get married. <clears throat> and as you can imagine, that's just nonsense, but uh, that's the way it is. So that's what you're going to run into, and I don't know when and if it's going to change, but I am making this video especially to address men who may be interested in getting uh, involved with a woman who is uh, separated. And here's what you have to think about. Now, think about that everything that I've just told you, it is possible that she could get an annulment, but there'd be a few problems with that. Uh, one, as I've mentioned, it's going to take a long time and you would need for the the spouse to the ex-spouse, whatever you want to call him, he would have to go along with it, I think, for the process to be fairly to be fairly quick. Then it's very expensive. So you're talking about spending uh, a few thousand dollars to get this done. I have heard about people uh, giving some uh, money to you know, make to make the marriage go away, if you know what I'm saying. I've heard about people bribing judges. I don't know how common that is, but again, it's just a, another thing that would add to the expenses. And now when you, when you think about that, I've, I've talked in another video about getting married or in the Philippines or the, the spousal process, the fiancé visa process. Even with just the normal process, like when my wife and I married, neither one of us had been married before, it took 11 months for our spousal visa to be approved, and then that's when we moved here to the U.S. So when you add uh, the possibility of having to do an annulment before you do any of that other stuff, and even once you get the annulment, I don't know how long it takes to get the documents, you're looking at adding considerable time and expense to the the possibility of the two of you being together. So if your goal is to meet someone and to marry her within a reasonable amount of time, uh, unfortunately, if she is separated, then that's, that's going to be really difficult. So uh, my advice to you, and I, I'm not trying to be cold-hearted about those who have, are separated. I'm just trying to give you the reality here. Uh, my advice to you is if you are a Westerner who wants to get involved with a Filipina, that it's probably, and you're wanting to do this within a reasonable amount of time, you need to find someone who is either single, widowed, or if she has already annulled her marriage, then that would be another possibility. But in terms of getting involved with someone who is still separated and has not yet been able to legally dissolve the marriage, uh, I would really think twice about getting involved with someone in that situation. And again, it's not anything, I'm not saying that people who are separated are, uh, are all bad or anything like that. That's, that's not what I'm saying because we have some friends who are separated and basically friends and family members who are in marriages on paper that have not been together for years but that's just the doesn't make them bad people it just makes them stuck in that situation uh, so anyway that that's just a little background on divorce in the philippines and i'm, I'm just bringing this up because i have i've met people met men who get involved with women who are separated and get really deeply emotionally involved and then they're kind of stuck in a situation because what do you do when you're emotionally involved with someone that you may never get to be with? You may never be able to marry her. Another thing people would say, another option is, well, you could just go to the Philippines and just live together and, and be be together even though not on paper. Uh, for me as a Christian that's not the route I would want to go but even from a strictly legal standpoint I remember an episode of Locked Up Abroad where a guy got involved with a woman and she ended up getting thrown in jail for adultery even though her husband had not been in, in her life for quite some time he filed a charge against her and threw her in jail so uh, 
look up that episode of Locked Up Abroad Philippines if you want to see what I'm talking about. Uh, has the law changed since then? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, as far as I know, divorce is still not legal in the Philippines. Well, that I do know. It's, it's not, still not legal in the Philippines. So just consider that in terms of your relationship choices. If you get involved with someone who's separated, he or she may not be available to marry you uh, anytime soon, maybe never. It just depends on how things work out. So anyway, I just thought I would share about that because it's something that I have uh, I encountered a lot when I was living in the Philippines. And even here in the U.S., I do encounter people who get online and chat with people who are separated but not available to, not legally able to get married. So just think about this.